The High Court in London has put the extradition of Julian Assange on hold until the U.S. provides Britain with more assurances about how the WikiLeaks publisher will be treated in U.S. custody. The court asked the U.S. for assurances that Assange will be permitted to rely on the First Amendment, that he won't face discrimination at trial because he's Australian, and that he will not face the death penalty. The London High Court also ruled Assange may be able to file additional appeals to block the extradition, but that'll depend on how the U.S. responds to the court's request. Julian Assange has been held in London's Belmarsh prison for nearly five years, awaiting possible extradition to the U.S., where he faces up to 175 years in prison for publishing classified documents exposing U.S. war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. Julian Assange's wife, Stella, spoke outside the courthouse just before our broadcast. Today's decision is astounding. The courts recognize that Julian is exposed to a flagrant denial of his freedom of expression rights that he is being discriminated against on the basis of his nationality, an Australian, and that he remains exposed to the death penalty. And yet, what the courts have done have been to invite a political intervention from the United States to send a letter saying it's all okay. I find this astounding. Five years into this case, the United States has managed to show the court that their case remains an attack on press freedom, an attack on Julian's life. What the courts haven't agreed to look at is the evidence that the United States has plotted to assassinate Julian, to kidnap him. Because if it acknowledges that, then of course he can't be sent to the United States. Julian is a political prisoner, he is a journalist, and he is being persecuted because he exposed the true cost of war in human lives. This case is a retribution. It is a signal to all of you that if you expose the interests that are driving war, they will come after you. They will put you in prison and they will try to kill you. Julian is just a few, min a few days away from the fifth anniversary of his arrest and imprisonment in Belmarsh prison. He has been in Belmarsh for five years without conviction, and the charges against him are to punish him for publishing the truth, for publishing evidence of the war crimes committed by the country that is trying to extradite him. Now, the UK courts have invited the United States to issue assurances. The Biden administration should not issue assurances. They should drop this shameful case that should never have been brought. Julian should never have been imprisoned for a single day. This is a shame on every democracy. Julian is a po political prisoner. He is a publisher, and he is being published for expressing uh, his political opinion, for expressing freedom of the press in its purest form. Free Julian. I ask everyone to rally behind him and call for his freedom, call for the Biden administration to drop the case and support House Resolution 934 before the U.S. Congress to drop this case. Thank you. 
That was attorney Stella Assange, the wife of Julian Assange and mother of their two young children. We're joined now by British MP, that's British Member of Parliament, Jeremy Corbyn, who served as the leader of the Labour Party from 2015 to 2020. He's standing outside the High Court. Welcome back to Democracy Now! MP Corbyn, if you could start off by responding to the court's decision and if you can explain it in as uh, uh, in lay terms. Thanks, Amy, and it's a real pleasure to be on the program with you. And uh, this morning there was a decision by the court which, as um, Stella has pointed out, effectively invites the USA to give some assurances. But it also gives the opportunity for a further appeal by Julian um, against his removal to the USA. But if we can sort of unpick the whole thing, the reality is the pressure needs to now go on to the Biden administration, go on to President Biden to say, look, you are trying to get somebody extradited from Britain under the Espionage Act, the same act that was used against Daniel Ellsberg, to be put into a supermax prison for the rest of his life, a death penalty. Why? Because he told the truth about Afghanistan, about Iraq, because he told uncomfortable truths about many other issues around the world. And if Julian goes down for this, every serious journalist around the world is going to be slightly more cautious about exposing war crimes, exposing corporate greed and so many other things. And so I appeal, if I may, through you and your audience on Democracy Now!, we need the maximum pressure all across the USA on the Biden administration, on the candidates in the forthcoming election to say, drop the charges against Julian Assange. We've had a big crowd outside the High Court here, and uh, the date has been set for return here on May the 20th, and we'll obviously be back here. But I should also say the support for Julian is growing. We've got good decisions out of the European Parliament, that's the European Union Parliament. We've also got good decisions out of the Council of Europe, which is a, a parliamentary assembly, I'm a member of it, of all European countries. We've also got the support of a significant number of governments around the world, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia and so on, all around the world. And so we have got through today, we've got a slight move forward, but it's no more than that. It's now up to us, all of us, who believe in democracy, believe in freedom of speech, to put that pressure on the Biden administration and, in the case of Britain, on my own government here, where the Home Secretary ultimately has the right to decide whether or not um, an extradition goes ahead. Whatever the courts say, ultimately, it's a political decision by the governments of the day. And there's a growing number of us in the UK Parliament that will continue putting that pressure on as well. And, and Jeremy Corbyn, you mentioned uh, the, uh, the support for Julian among uh, institutions in the European Union. How likely would it be, uh, regardless uh, if, if the British authorities and the courts decide to extradite him, that the European Court of Human Rights might intervene in the case? Um, the, the next stage could, would be to uh, take the case to the European Court of Human Rights. The European Court of Human Rights is not a European Union institution. It's much older than that. It was founded in the post-war settlement when the European Convention on Human Rights was set up. And it is a court that um, meets in Strasbourg and has judges elected from every European country. And pretty well all of them, except Russia and Belarus, are in the European um, Council of Europe and therefore in the European Court of Human Rights. And the case would go there under the convention rights. And it's significant, the numbers of members of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly that have shown their support for Julian Assange. Now, obviously, if it, that would be a political expression. This would be a judicial decision. But if it goes there, that would be, in my view, a good thing. But the much better option would be if President Biden recognized that within the t terms of his job as President of the United States to defend the US Constitution, does the US Constitution not protect the right of free speech, the right of assembly, the right to publish? That's really what it's about. 
And, and there have been some uh, media reports that the Biden administration was considering a plea deal, uh, which would uh, uh, end up with uh, Julian pleading guilty to a lesser charge, but then not having to serve any time in prison. Your, your reaction to, do you think this is another uh, a fallback position that the Biden administration is considering? Well, it shows if the Biden administration is even thinking about that, that shows they're having second thoughts about their decision to pursue the Espionage Act against Julian. Uh, I don't know what negotiations have gone on or not gone on. What I do know is that Julian has suffered unbelievably in almost five years in a supermax prison in Britain, the most maximum security prison we've got in this country. The conditions there are pretty awful. And before that, he was five years almost in the Ecuadorian embassy. My principle is that uh, he is being punished for publishing extremely uncomfortable truths about Abu Ghraib, about Afghanistan, and about much more else around the world. And uh, he's an embarrassment to governments like uh, those that have committed war crimes around the world. Well, surely all of us that believe in democracy should now be standing alongside Julian. Jeremy Corbyn, I know you just have a minute to go, and I want to switch gears for a moment, though. I would assume if Julian Assange were out of prison and he were um, fully able to operate WikiLeaks, we'd be finding out a little more about Gaza. But I did want to ask you about Gaza and the U.N. Security Council resolution that Britain voted for the U.S. abstain, calling for a temporary ceasefire during Ramadan. Your thoughts on the overall situation there, what Britain what the U.S. Uh, should be doing right now and what you feel Israel should be doing. The situation in Gaza is obviously a global disgrace. 32,000 people dead on top of the 1,000 people that were killed on October the 7th. And uh, eventually, the U.N. Security Council not being vetoed by the USA is a testament to the strength of all those that have demonstrated all over the world in support of the Palestinian people to demand a permanent full ceasefire. That happened yesterday. The British government eventually voted for the Ramadan ceasefire, which is good, um, which is a step forward, and that's only because of the sense of political pressure in Britain. We've had now 10 national demonstrations, and we've got another one on Saturday. We are an enormous growing force of people that want to see peace and want to see the withdrawal of Israeli troops, an end to the occupation, and justice for the Palestinian refugees. And Netanyahu is now in a difficult position because, in effect, he's been disowned by the rest of the world, and even the USA didn't veto the UN resolution yesterday. And so I do appeal to those good people in Israel that have always opposed the occupation and continue to oppose the war to keep up whatever pressure they can there. We need a ceasefire to save life. Listen, 32,000 dead, half of whom are children. Famine, starvation, and as the weather warms up in Rafa, and I've been in Rafa, it's not a big place, it's gonna be cholera because of the lack of sanitation. Children dying on the streets for lack of food, lack of water, lack of medicine, when a few kilometers away, there's food, there's water, there's medicine in unlimited supplies. The agenda, I believe, of the Netanyahu administration is to force the Palestinian people of Gaza through the Rafah crossing into the Sinai and create another, another Gaza. And uh, with that, another Nakba. It's time to stand with the Palestinian people. And at least we made some progress at the UN yesterday, but we've got to go a lot further and a lot faster to stop the bombardment, stop the killing, stop the bombing, and get the food and medicine in urgently to support the Palestinian people. Jeremy Corbyn, we want to thank you so much for being with us again. Member of the British Parliament, served as Labour Party leader from 2015 to 2020. He's standing up outside of the London High Court, which has put the extradition of Julian Assange on hold for a few weeks until the U.S. provides more assurances about how the WikiLeaks founder would be treated in a trial and to guarantee that he would not face the death penalty, though he does face up to 175 years in prison.